Today on BRS TV Investigates, are you using your single pump DC powered skimmer to its full potential? Are there ways to harness the DC skimmer pump's features in order to finally achieve that optimal skim? Today we test them to find out and then later we're putting it all together on a real world reef tank, the BRS 750 XXL. Hi, I'm Randy with this Friday's BRS TV Investigates where we put popular reefing gear, theories and methods to the test by experimenting on our own tanks so you don't have to experiment on yours. And in today's experiment, we double down on testing DC powered skimmers. We're in the last week's test using DC powered recirculating skimmers we discovered that we have the ability to control the type of skimmate foam produced, either by making it wetter or drier, by simply changing the speed of the air draw and in turn, the velocity of the air leaving the skimmer neck using the push button controls of the pump driver. However, since more reefers likely use a single pump DC protein skimmer over the recirculating design, today we thought we'd conduct a similar test using the adjustable speeds of the skims SN167 Monster DC skimmers to see if we could achieve the same results. What we find out today just might change the way you adjust your DC skimmer going forward. As we mentioned in previous skimmer testing videos, our skimmers are essentially foam engines and we can expect optimal engine performance when the right ratio of organics and air is achieved. Over the course of the last four skimmer tests, we've been learning more about ways we can control the amount of air inside the protein skimmer body and what effect those changes play on the type of skimmate we can produce. In last week's test, we set three DC recirculating skimmers to three different air draw rates using different power settings on the skimmer pump controller and discovered that a lower amount of air draw resulted in a much thicker, drier foam head with a higher concentration of organics, while the highest amount of air draw yielded a much wetter, less organically rich foam that collected far more water content into the collection cup versus the dry skim. One thing that was blaringly obvious is what goes into the skimmer must come out, so much faster air draw creates much faster rising bubbles, which do seem to collapse faster as well. Ultimately, we found that with the push button controls to air draw, we gain a much wider range of control over the type of skimmate produced, where neither more or less air was better, but rather the right amount of air tuned to your specific bio load is better. These results lead us to today's experiment where we answer the question, does a single pump DC powered skimmer provide us with as much control and tunability as the recirculating skimmer design? Let's find out. Okay, so today's experiment is nearly identical to last week's test, except this time we're using a more common skimmer design and budget range with three skims, SN167 DC single pump skimmers. Where in the first test we set the pump speed of each skimmer using the DC pump controller with test tank 1 set to the lowest speed of setting 1, test tank 2 set to the middle speed of 10, and test tank 3 maxed out with a speed setting of 20. We installed each skimmer at 9.5 inches of water which is right at the top end of the skims DC skimmers water depth recommendation from the manufacturer and was also the depth that showed the widest range of air draw. We then adjusted the water height inside each one to equal levels, then dosed five mils of organics or skimmate to each tank every 10 minutes and watched to see how the different skimmer speeds affected the type of foam produced. In a second test using the same pump speed settings and organic dosage, we actively tune the water level inside each skimmer as we dose the organics, which is more representative of how most reefers would use them at home. Remember, what we're looking for here is whether or not these single pump adjustable DC skimmer designs that only have one pump in charge of drawing in air and water will produce similar skimmate foam results like what we saw in last week's testing where tuning the air versus the water level inside was the best method of achieving a wetter or drier skim. Let's see how they performed. In the first test, where we set each skimmer's water height to equal levels inside the skimmer bodies and then set their pump speeds to settings of 1, 10, and 20 from left to right respectively, we can see that after several doses of skimmate to each, there's definitely signs of a thicker, more dry skimmate foam in tank 1 over the very large and wet bubble foam in tank 3. 
Again, as we saw in previous tests, tank two is running at about middle of the road between the two pump setting extremes. And also similar to the last test is that although the low flow, low air draw of tank one does create some dry thick foam, there isn't enough velocity at this water height setting to push the foam up and into the collection cup. Looking at the time lapse of all three tanks in test one, we see that the higher velocity of air in tank two and tank three push the foam bubbles all the way up into the neck of the skimmer and spill over into the cup. We can see they collect a mixture of both organics and water, which give the skimmer a wet, light brown look to it that would also allude to it being less organically rich. Whereas in tank one with low airflow, by nearly the end of the test, the drier skimmate foam is able to build up enough to start raising into the neck, but without using the gate valve to actively make adjustments to the water level inside the skimmer body, at this setting, there's just not enough velocity to push that dry skimmate into the collection cup. But what happens when we do start making those active adjustments to water level inside the skimmer body? Let's find out what happens in the next test. Test two is next where we repeated the same settings and dose of the organics. However, this time, rather than just monitor the foam production, we actively tuned the water level to adjust how each skimmate foam head was collected. As the test progresses, you can clearly see that we needed to raise the water level inside test tank one in order to get the thick dry foam to raise up into the skimmer neck, while in test tank three, we had to lower the water level nearly to as much as possible in order to keep the cup from overfilling too quickly. This is very evident near the end of the test with the differences between the consistency of the bubbles within the main chamber of the body, where in tank one, it has more of a clear transparent look to the body since there's less air and the bubbles primarily gather inside the neck. However, in the middle tank two, you can see that the larger, more turbulent bubble reaction is happening in the upper third of the skimmer body all the way up into the neck while in tank three, there is so much air and air velocity that large bubbles are forming in more than half the skimmer body all the way up into the cup to the point where the cup fills up rather quick with wet, organically less dense skimmate water. So of these three skimmer settings we tested today, if I had to personally choose one of the setting options, it would definitely be test tank two but keeping in mind that these settings are specific to the organic load that we put into the tanks. It's important to note that the adjustability of the DC pump did allow us to adjust the air to the amount of organics in this test, which is something you can do on your own tank where we all have different amounts of fish and food. So we've got one more protein skimmer performance test coming up in this BRS TV investigate series. But before we reveal what that test will look like, let's rate today's questions on the reef fantasy to reef certainty scale. As to the question of does a single pump DC powered skimmer provide us with as much control and tunability as a recirculating DC skimmer design? Although having a single pump skimmer design with an adjustable DC pump does provide us with more control over the type of skimmate foam that the skimmer produces, there are still factors like operating depth or water height in the sump that will absolutely have an effect on their performance, which needs to be accounted for when tuning, whereas with a recirculating skimmer design, the operating depth just isn't an issue, which is why I'm rating this one a 7 out of 10. The single DC pump skimmer is easier to adjust over a single AC pump skimmer, but falls short of the truly configurable option like the DC recirculating skimmer or 200 Regal EXT that we've tested. Okay, so what's in store for the next skimmer test? Well, we actually use a Reef Octopus Regal 200 EXT recirculating skimmer on our very own BRS 750 XXL. So we plan to take what we've learned about tuning the air draw rate and put it to the test on a real world tank full of fish and SPS corals. It was this very 750 XXL tank that we teamed up with Worldwide Corals to create what we feel is the only SPS reef tank setup guide you'll ever need. So if you want to achieve results like this and emulate what some of the best reefers in the industry are doing, here's the link to that.